Making a choice that is 1% better or 1% worse might seem very insignificant in the moment, but over the course of days, weeks, and even years, it can have a dramatic impact on our lives, both for the positive or the negative. Hi everyone, Chris Natsky here with Black Belt Leadership Speaking and Coaching, and welcome to your final installment of the Mind of a Champion Tip of the Week for 2023. So if you're like me, I often will take this week between Christmas and New Year's to plan my upcoming year. I'll, I'll actually have an entire process where I review my past year, what were the victories that I had, what were some of the disappointments, and then what were the lessons learned so that I can create my next year coming up. And if you'd like to learn more about that, just reach out to me. But the idea here is, is that when we make our plans for the upcoming year, many times we have very grandiose visions for what we want to achieve. And what happens is we have this vision, but we don't take consistent action on them because number one, we may not know how, and number two, it might seem so big we don't know where to start. But the idea here is, is being able to take small, consistent action, regardless of how big or small you think it is, just getting yourself moving begins to build momentum. And again, many times it's not that big of a thing. I love what author James Clear in one of my favorite books, uh, Atomic Habits, wrote. He talks about this idea that taking small, consistent action over time can lead to massive results. And he says it in a way that says, consider for a moment this. Consider that you take something that you want to get better at over the course of the year and you dedicate yourself to be 1% better in that activity each and every day for an entire year. So each and every day you wake up, you are committed to be just 1% better at that activity. Well, what ends up happening is over the course of a year, if you maintain that pace at the end of the year, you'll be 37 times better than when you started. That's pretty impressive. Now, what if you continued that same pace over two years? Well, many of you might say, well, your efforts would be doubled. You'd be 74 times better. Than you, than you were at the beginning two years ago. But that's not the case. You see, you'd literally be 1,400 times better because those good habits that you've established, they don't add up, they compound. They compound. And if you maintain that 1% increase each and every day over five years, you'd be 76 million times better. So where do you have an opportunity to take small and consistent action in this upcoming year to get where you want to go? Now, certainly this works when we are focusing on the positive aspects and our positive habits, but it also works this way in our negative habits. You know, consider this, consider you're an airline pilot and you take off from Los Angeles on your way to, uh, to Hawaii. And somewhere along the line, you have miscalculated your directions and you're 1% off. And you end up 1% off south of, of, your, of the destination the way you've calculated. Well, at the end of five hours, you're not going to be in Hawaii. You're going to be probably in New Zealand. <laughs> I, can't, I can't prove that scientifically. Uh, but the fact of the matter is you know what I'm talking about. You either end up in New Zealand or somewhere in the ocean. You see, because over time, that poor habit begins to make you go more and more off base of where you want to be. So, as we look at this next year ahead, where do you have some positive habits that you can embark upon to make sure that you are keeping yourself on pace for the things you want to create in this upcoming year? Well, I've got five habits that I want to share with you that I not only um, practice in my own life or do my best to practice, but also share with my clients. And these are five habits to help you achieve breakthrough results in the upcoming year. And the first one is this, is number one is regardless of the goal that you have, break it down into small digestible chunks. Break it down into small digestible chunks. Many times when we have a big uh, audacious goal that we want to achieve, as I said, it can seem so big, we don't know where to start, and we tend to procrastinate. And I don't know if you're like me, but there are definitely times in the, in the past where I've written down a goal and all of a sudden I look up and it's November and I haven't started on it yet. But you see, when you break it down in small digestible chunks, what you begin to do is you begin to gain confidence because you're making small achievements, say, each and every week, and that builds momentum. So whatever that big thing is that you want to be doing this year, 
break it down into small digestible chunks and take action in that regard, that 1% each and every day, so you can keep yourself in great momentum. Number two is this, is pre-commit to those activities. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you know, many times this time of year is where people will want to be committing to get in better shape. And I want to get up and I want to work out in the morning. I want to walk. I want to run. I want to go to the gym, etc. And what pre-commitment does is saying to yourself, I'm going to commit to these days of working out at the beginning of the week for the next week and then also the night before. So when that alarm clock goes off, and you're in that nice warm bed, you're not making the decision there. You've already pre-committed to it the night before. So then what happens when that alarm goes off, you already have your workout gear sitting at the foot of the bed. You've committed, so you pop up out of bed, you put on your clothes, you tie your shoes, and you're off and ready to go because you've made a pre-commitment. You're not making a choice point when you're at your weakest. You're making your choice point when you're at your strongest. Number three, number three is to schedule or anchor your most important activities that will help move you to where you want to go in your calendars. You know, this is a time again where people want to get into better healthy habits, etc. Maybe they want to heal relationships or, you know, embark on something that really makes them closer to those that they love. And so rather than, you know, take your wife out uh, when you get around to it, when you've got some free time, anchor those date nights in your calendar. Rather than get to the gym when, you, when the time opens up in your calendar, actually make that the first thing you've got in your calendar and work everything else around it. Nature abhors a vacuum. So if you're going to wait till the time opens up in order to do the things that you're committed to doing, I can almost guarantee you it's not going to happen. So anchor those those most important events in your calendar. Number four, number four, is to find people that can support you on this journey. I think it was Jim Rohn that said, you are an average of the five people you spend the most time with. So surround yourself with people who are committed to healthy habits themselves. They may be even different than yours, but what you're doing is, is you're surrounding yourself with people and that, that are basically working on trying to commit to the same things in, your, in their lives. And now what happens is you're there supporting each other. And as I said, sometimes they're the same. Sometimes they're workout buddies. Sometimes they're people that you check in each, within each and every day to talk about the commitment you have to each other. Sometimes it's a coach. But regardless of who they are, make sure that you're surrounding yourselves with people that are going to support you on your journey. And then finally, and this, number five, is the hardest for me, is when you have those little victories that you achieve, say, each and every other week, you know, or each and every week because you've broken that process down, take time to celebrate. Hardest one for me to do. I'm usually on to the next thing. But take some time to celebrate. You know, is it a, is it a, a, a massage? Is it a, a nice walk in the park? Is it an ice cream cone? I don't care what it is. But you see what will happen is, is our... Our psyches are either focused on um, drawing us toward pleasure or away from pain. So when you know that you're able to have a little reward because you've been consistent in the efforts that you committed yourself to doing, now you give yourself that reward, you're going to continue to build that momentum. So there you have it, my friends. There are five habits to make this upcoming year a breakthrough year for you and to help you be on track to reach the goals and aspirations you have in the upcoming year. So anyway, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you for continuously tuning into these, giving me your likes, your shares, your comments, etc. And I'm wishing nothing for all of you than an outstanding upcoming year, one that helps you achieve breakthrough results in whatever you choose it to be in your life and help you reach in and find the person that you're most um, been groomed to be that's in your soul so that you can make the impact that you want to in this in this lifetime. So anyway, this has been Chris Natsky with Black Belt Leadership Speaking and Coaching, and we'll see you next year on the Mind of a Champion Tip of the Week.